Sh should I even like try to pronounce this goddamn thing? Okay, g give me a second here. Uh, pre J kind toy? Not your professional walkthroughs channel presents. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Banner Saga 2 here on Not Your Professional Walkthroughs channel with me, your host Max. Well, we are currently in a fairly interesting situation. We have the most points of renown I have ever acquired. However, we have very poor morale. We are supposed to somehow take care of 184 Varl, 298 fighters, and 352 clansmen. Now, unfortunately, we have zero supplies, so I'm really hoping that the clansmen will be able to pull off some scavenging or hunting, or we are seriously screwed. Also, because the ravens have departed and we are now once again back playing as the rogues part of the story, we will see how we will manage to do with the current situation. Unfortunately, right now we do not, I think, possess any more opportunities for training. Therefore, I'm gonna go talk to Prince Luden and we will see what the story will or how this story will unfold. The prince is acting even more standoffish than usual. You and Ivor have caught him staring ahead and twisting the ring on his finger over and over. Ursa quietly stands nearby. Rook, glad to be heading home? Ludin turns to the two of you and offers a polite smile. Even after that chasm, would it surprise you if I said no? Uh, I thought you hated being so far from Orbrang. Is there anything you actually like? It doesn't matter, that's where we are going. Let's go with the first one. Life on the trail hasn't won me over, but it's not all bad. It's even possible that I've learned a few things about leading people while out here. You, Ivor, and Ursa are stunned to hear the prince talk this way. Luden, I've grown up in comfort and trained with scholars and fighters. I've never known anything else. Ivor, saying stuff like that won't make you any friends in this caravan. Luden. But that's just it. Among these clansmen, I've seen the differences. I think I understand them a bit more. That's great, Prince Luden. Oh yeah? What exactly do you understand? What do you plan to do with this understanding? These two are pretty damn good for me. I'm gonna go with the middle one. I'm still not really sure if there's some form of a karmic system in the questions like one is good one is neutral one is bad sometimes you're just asking question in order to like understand the background a little bit more or get some more details out of the npcs in order to enrich your knowledge about the lore of the world but i don't know some of these interactions i'm really thinking that there is some form of a hidden system which then changes the outcome of the story. Anyhow, Luden says, it seems that they know just as little about the things I know as I do about the things they know. For instance, they know almost nothing about the kingdom's economy and I know very little about making the things they sell. I know the trade routes, but they know the trade. You've never seen the prince this animated, but then his face falls. I just don't think the king will appreciate my knowledge. Ursa will agree. My father is not what you call open-minded. Ursa, the king's hard man has to be, but his son is his weakness. Ludin glares at her, but the archer only smirks. Can you tell me about King Minolf? 
The prince is the king's weakness. I'll make my own opinion of the king when I meet him. Yeah, I'm thinking once again between first. Let's try to ask some more details maybe about the king. I mean, I'm not really sure how much longer it's gonna take us to get to Einatorf or what, what's the name of the damn city. I mean, these names are seriously giving me nightmares. Because each time I'm supposed to pronounce some of these new names. Ah, uh, man. Anyhow, Ludin says, I suppose, but there's not much to him. He's a king. He draws a hard line on nearly every topic. Talking to him is much like being told what to do. In fact, it's exactly that. Rook, let's says, said that about me at times. Okay? This isn't about being his son. You'll see. Ivor, kings usually have to make tough decisions and stick with them. Maybe someday you'll see why. Luden, I know. I just don't think he'll care for my ideas on trading with peasant commoners. What would you like to be called? We're all people, prince. Even you. Perhaps you're right, says Luden. Just keep an open mind about your father... The way you'd like him to have towards your ideas, Ludin. That's something I've never considered before. I'll think on it. As Prince Ludin and Ursa walk away, you feel Ivor watching you. What? Do you believe half the nonsense you say? I think I sounded really wise just then. <laughs> Ivor, it sounded like you'd been practicing it for a while. That's fair. It'll work. I'll work on it. The two of you share a smile before moving on. Okay, so we definitely need to leave the camp and hopefully come across some form of... Town, village, merchants, whoever, or we are royally screwed. The lack of supplies will be demoralizing our party even more and we will be losing members like crazy. A, me a metal clanging is heard in the distance and grows louder. You see a yawks cart surrounded by four varl and an older woman hitting a ladle against a pan. All sorts of things for sale, she says, but her eyes go white when she looks at you. It's you, special deals when it comes to you. How do you know me? Who are you? Let me see what you have. Well, I definitely need provisions, that's for sure. And I really hope that she has provisions. We have quite a lot of renown, so possibly even some of the party members which did not leave Rook's party and joined the Ravens might be able to actually level up thanks to this. Let's go with this. Uh, words travel fast, she says. Think you can slay a Sunder and keep it a secret? She clicks her tongue and shakes her head. Madeir knows of you, sure enough. Why are you out here selling things? It'll just... Sh let's just stop asking and just let's take a look because I really hate the morale. And because if we are gonna be able to get food, I will have to camp yet again. Let like a day or two pass in order to get the morale at least to like normal state. Uh, this way I can ensure that when we are actually engaging the enemy, our will points will be better and we will not have some form of negative stats or debuffs while trying to deal with thieves, robbers, mercenaries, dredge or anything else that we might come across. Of course, Madir says. But make up your mind, Madir will be gone as quick as she arrived, and don't get any ideas of sneaking off with things. These four Varl have the keenest eyes, the sharpest blades, and the shortest temper. You feel the Varl watching your every move. Please tell me you have some freaking food. Yes! Okay, great. Uh, we need a whole lot of supplies. Uh... That's two days worth of supplies. Let's go for... 
four days worth of supplies. This should potentially get us to the point which we will come across another town and another marketplace. It will be some form of a buff, but thinking about, you know what, we actually need to grab more because our morale is absolutely gone. So we're gonna take uh, all their food. I'm gonna be left with 50, or theoretically, if we go like this, this is still six days worth of supplies. Uh, we're gonna use up like a day or two on camping and let's take a look at the Brosh? I'm not really sure if this was already in the first game, but you require level 7 and it costs 14 points of renown in order for you to acquire this. And it gives you plus 2... I'm not really... All talents plus 1 will per turn? I'm not really sure what's, what's the 2 uh, all talents. Is it like the abilities or just I'm not really sure if this for example if you're trying to attack either strength or armor if you give get two plus to the attack so so I'm probably not gonna go with this also I don't really think I have uh, uh, a level level seven hero this is interesting the Bjorf's Drop, a honey-colored stone, tough to have hardened after dripping from the god Bjornstein. Plus three will talents, and plus one will while resting. So this theoretically means that if you are using a talent or like a special ability, usually you can go from one to like three uh, will points. But this should give you additional three will points, so theoretically speaking, could it be possible that if you would do, for example, five points of damage to armor, with three additional will points, you are able to take it down or up to eight, and with this, you are even able to take it up to eleven, so... That, that can actually be kind of a freaking useful thing, all things considered. Uh, I'm not really sure if I leave this shop and go check on the heroes if I can return. Because the merchant said that once someone is gone, they are gone and we are screwed. Uh, this is, however, really interesting. Uh, what's the sunstone? Never deflected. Mariner of old would use these stones to find the location of the sun even when there was none. Not many know exactly how. I'm not really sure if uh, never deflected means that uh, if you attack an enemy, uh, if he will never have the possibility to deflect your attack. So for example, imagine that Rook or... Uh, anyone else would be down to like one or three points of strength and if he would attack any of the dredge or any of the other enemies what might happen due to the lack of strength is that they might dodge the, or deflect the attack but with this theoretically speaking they might not be able to okay what about uh obsidian powder I think this was also in the first game. And the Dendro's Eye. A small stone uh, thought to bring luck until the tooth it's tied to falls out. What? Plus two strength resist, plus one armor, minus one movement. So theoretically speaking, this can be a great thing for a Varl. There, um... Movement is already restricted as it is. If you have plus two strength resistance, uh, you are gonna take a bit less damage, and also plus one armor means that this can theoretically buff you. Uh, this is for level five, and this is for level seven. And I want this. 
And I'm thinking I'm gonna take this damn thing because I'm quite sure we have someone who is or should be at that level. We still have 32 points of renown, so theoretically speaking, I should still be able to upgrade uh, a hero if possibly required. We have six days worth of supplies. If we can for like two days to improve the morale, this should help us sustain the party that we currently have so that more Varl, more fighters or more clansmen will not be departing due to non-existing supplies. I really don't think I will be grabbing this. So that will be it and let's go and camp. Because we have now those supplies, that's gonna be really good for us. So as you can see, the morale is now normal. And if we take a look at our heroes, we might see who is left with Rook. Because a lot of Varl have act. I swear to God I saw Gunnolf join actually in the last episode, the Ravens. Or is there like another Varl who lo looks really like the same way? What you got here? Plus three strength. Okay, that's pretty damn impressive. Um, what about this thing? Plus two armor resist, but this is only a trinket, which is for level three hero. So theoretically speaking, we can actually equip this thing, and that is for much better level and has for better effects. Oh, uh, we are gonna put you here. Theoretically speaking, we should put something to Hakon as well. Higher stats and talent, choose a second ability, increase your item rank. So we would be at level 6. Okay, if we don't want to promote you, uh, we can theoretically give you... <laughs> we don't have a level 7 hero, man. Which is not the most optimal. So, so far we can theoretically give you this ring if I will be able to track the stupid icon over. I really hate equipping the trinkets to the heroes in this game. And uh, theoretically we can go with another archer. We can uh, level up a thief. Because this will definitely help us out. And let's see, can we give you now something better? Uh... Ba -ba -ba -da -da. No, unfortunately, everything is used up. So let us see. Uh, let's go for armor and armor breaking. Rook uh, is level 5. If we go level 6 for 13, we are going to be left with 10 points of renown. Uh. Who would be a potentially good candidate? One of the twin brothers has definitely joined the Ravens. So that would be Mogan. Because the leader of the Ravens had an interaction with him. You can go and watch the previous episode. I swear a Gale died in the first game, at least in my playthrough. Because, well, we got betrayed by a certain individual. Go watch the playthrough if you want to know what the heck am I talking about. And even uh, definitely looking much better with the killer beard and the gray string of hair on his head. But if we go here... I really don't think that the Mender is the priority when it comes to upgrading. Oh uh, man, I would definitely love to see press. These are actually quite efficient. You know what? Let's uh, level up you. We're gonna take you up a notch when it comes to breaking the enemy armor. We're gonna put you over here. This is actually kind of a super killer combination. Uh, we have a lot of, however, fighters over here, which we should theoretically be using in order to level them up as well. But for the purpose of right now, let's just have this as the default party. 
Okay, we're gonna leave now, and because we have better morale. Oh, come on, man! We, we just left the camp! How can you immediately do this to me? Okay, once you're across the Orange Star Riverbed, the wind ceases to cut through the humid air. The darkening sky lets loose its rain, and soon, fat drops of water turn the dirt path to sucking mud, slowing the caravan. Cloaks are pulled overhead, and children and animals are wrangled near the courts. Right, so now we're gonna slow down, which is gonna burn through those supplies even faster. Oh, thank you for the foraging. I was hoping to avoid visiting this part of the kingdom for at least a few more years, Prince Luden says. At least others have had the sense to abandon this cesspool. As arrogant as he sounds, he's right. There are very few signs of life around you, yet you still feel like you're being watched. The lowling of the usually quiet dogs indicates the beast's difficulty pulling the cart. You're up to your knees in it when a scout comes to you, found some stone markers that led us to a few paths of solid ground over there. He points while shouting over the dogs. Uneven and bumpy, but easier than this. Stone markers? Yeah, the man says. Don't look natural. Don't look like much of anything else either. Just some stones marking a path through this place is all I can figure. You would ask Mr. T. Yeah, I'm still not sure how to pronounce his name, but he's nowhere around, probably out gathering mushrooms. Lead the way, could it be more trouble than it's worth? We'll push on. Yeah, let's just stick with this. The man looks surprised but shrugs it off. Rain continues and the caravan struggles to keep moving forward. Is it getting finally dark in here? And it looks like there might be a godstone or something. Someone's son is missing, Ivor says, motioning to a crowd shouting a boy's name. A man with burly eyes looks at you and says, he's my only son. He treats his white goat like his best friend. I must have wandered off, it must have wandered off, and he's out there looking for it. The man looks across the rainy bog. I've got to find my boy. Wait here, Ivor and I will find him. We can't stop, but take some gear and get your son. I'm gonna go with the second option because we cannot stop the caravan in the rain and the mud because we can be ambushed. And the people take some food and rope and head back into the swampy land. You watch unsure if they'll make it out. Come on, how come our morale is poor again? I swear this looks like another godstone. The glassman and Varl follow you through the worst rain and mud you experience. An unfortunate break and slogging through the muck comes from a woman shouting, Get away from there. Who are you? A couple of ragsmen, locals in rough spun clothing that almost bends into the bog, jumps back from a supply cart and brandish weapons, the roar of bears and other cragsmen come from around you. Yeah, I think that's related to those freaking markers. So we are gonna be probably ambushed here. I'm gonna most likely take on the default party. Uh, or theoretically, we can switch I don't know um Hakon for somebody else just so that we have at least three Varl in backup so let's try this therefore we still have three archers or three ranged units and we have three of the melee combatants slash the front line. Are these freaking trained bears? You, you gotta be kidding me, right? Okay, let's take a look at the battlefield. Oh yeah, we're so not keeping the archers over there. Oh, uh, theoretically speaking, the 
biggest problem is that if I move my two Voral in here, they will be taking uh, at least two points of damage, either from the bear or either from uh, the spearman or any of the other clansmen of the enemy gang who has ambushed us. What if we were to try something so ridiculous as... Yeah, you see, this, this is still a problem because uh, Morg will still be ambushed by like two bears and it'll just be nasty. So, uh... Grace will have to move in to help out. You know what? Let's do this. I'm not really sure how this will affect our party because, uh, well, there is the big if uh, question. Like, for example, we know that Dredge can throw those explosive stones. What is there to tell me that these bandits don't have some other similar explosive tech? I'm actually thinking I might go uh, like this. We are gonna move over here and uh, we're gonna start attacking. It's five points of armor. He has to move in. You can form a shield wall with freaking bear. You, you gotta be kidding me. Seriously? Let's go and dispose of the archer. We have poor morale, which is definitely bad. That is reducing the top uh, willpower, which we can obtain here or have here. I'm thinking we might try to impel the teddy. Okay, so that is definitely a bad thing which has happened. We're gonna have to protect her or we are seriously screwed. Let's move you forward so that you can... Bird of Prey, a uh, fire arrow at greater range with 100% chance to hit. I'm not really sure if that is gonna be the best thing to try and do here. Let's just reduce the freaking armor on the bear. Really need to move in the second wall because th this is not funny. Can you actually... No, you need to move here. Okay, this is gonna seriously reduce the armor. This is gonna be a problem because he used ability, and if we don't move her away, she can die here theoretically. Let's try to take out at least some of the spearmen's uh, strength here. Our archers are getting pummeled here. This is 10 points of strength reduced, which is basically making him almost uh, unusable. Fortunately, we're definitely gonna get some injuries here. That is almost the entire strength of the archer gone. We need to move you the heck away, so that theoretically speaking, you can still dish out serious damage. Okay, so now the bear's armor is almost gone. We can kill you. Ah, oh, damn it, the bear. Yeah, bears are freaking nasty. At six points of strength down, one attack like that, and theoretically speaking, the bear is gone. 
biggest problem here, which I'm dealing with, is that the other bear has still quite a lot of fight in him. It's another range unit done. Nice deflection. I'm gonna move you over here so that theoretically you can reduce the armor on the teddy bear even more, so when our Varl will go and attack, clearly he should be able to dish out quite a freaking punishment. Let's reduce the strength on the enemy spearman even more, which is the only reason why I assume she is not dead. And that leaves the bear. That's another injury. Yeah, this is that reduction in the movement, right? Not a huge fan. But we gotta do what we gotta do. 11 points of strength. Okay, I'm not really sure what you're expecting from the Varl, but if you want to be pet, here you go. Unfortunately, I did get quite a lot of injuries here. Mr. T is injured. Brace is injured. Ned is injured. God damn it. Deef is injured. My god, this is horrible. 8 points of renown, we're gonna have to camp out in order to increase the morale, cause this is really, really bad. Uh, okay, it looks like maybe there's another training scenario available for me, but what I wanna do is we're gonna have to remove a lot of the party members, some of them have been really badly injured. Let's go like this. It's mostly humans, two Varl. Uh, let's rest up first. Let's see what do they have to tell us. The blonde axeman, one of two twins from a small village near Skork, is chopping into a fallen tree for no apparent reason. His swings look dangerous. Hogan, everything okay? He glares at you. Where's your brother Mogan? He left with the ravens, wondering if I should have done the same. Why is that? Asks Rook. I've been following, following your lead for a long time now, and for what? My brother is gone, my wife and children are frightened of everything around them, including me. I tell them this constant fighting is only for a time, but it's changing me. I see it in their eyes, in my own reflection. I thought I was doing it to protect them, but if they think I'm a monster, what's the point? Uh, yeah, they'll appreciate what you're doing for them one day. I don't know, my wife said she needs a man who will hold her more than his axe. I think she might leave me. I'm not really sure where she'd go, but that's none of my business, says Rook. Hogan, just tell me this caravan wouldn't fall apart without me fighting in the shield wall, and I'll stay armed. Encourage him to keep fighting, be with your family, keep chopping that log, the answer will come to you. I mean, he is a great class of warriors. They usually have great armor, and their ability can deal the damage, which is equal to multiple points in strength and armor at the same time. So, uh, not really sure. I'll well, just keep him around just to be on the safe side. We need to keep everyone safe, not just your family but all the families. Make things right with your wife and kids in our brain. The Axeman looks somewhat re relieved, if not a bit guilty. 
Hogan, a few more fights then. Thanks, Rook. Sometime, something like this makes me glad we're cross paths when we did. I'm kind of unhappy about your brother leaving us, but what the heck can I do? Now, I'm not really sure if this gives me more trainings because he was close to the tent. Well, come on in and let's have a look at you, Swan the trainer says. Just wanting to swing at each other, Swan asks, or are you here to actually learn something? that could save your life in the battlefield. Let's go with this. Plenty, Swan says, walking into the large tent, try to keep up. You can handle yourself, but what about your other fighters, Swan says. Ever used a Voral and an archer to trap somebody? What? You think about what he's saying. You feel up to the challenge? I'm ready. Then let us begin! I have no idea how this works. Okay. Battering ram enemy into rain of arrows. A thief's rain of arrows trap is triggered when ever an enemy cross the marked tile. Ivory. Use Ivor's battering ram to push an enemy onto the mark tile. Okay. So theoretically speaking, if we would put down the ability somewhere in these two tiles, we can use his battering ram to theoretically push them back in order to hit the damn thing. I think. Not really sure. Not that skilled in like trying to combo the abilities okay so now we need to theoretically push someone into that freaking point damn it I'm gonna have to save up some low points so that these dummies will move forward Theoretically speaking, I can... Move here. This way I'm closer to the enemy. Uh, surprise me. Please don't kill the Varl before I'm able to do this damn thing. Um, unfortunately, I've not have yet learned of... For example, in Battle Brothers, you have the option to wait the turn of one of your party members and move on to the next one and then return to the uh, hero of your choice, but I just don't see it here. We're gonna end the turn. And let's see, let's see, let's see. I wanna see if we can clear it at the... Do this thing. So now, if I am lucky enough, I should be able to use the battering ram to like push her. He's gonna push her through this damn thing. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Okay, it did work. Okay, so basically the cl uh, class is about setting up combos for abilities. 16 points of renown for completing this. That's great because that can either be turned into supplies or it can be turned into uh, upgrades or something else. Okay, let us leave and I think this is a godstone or Aldinker's something. flame welcomes endless war. But why? I really don't understand these random narration points. Either narrate the whole damn thing, or... I don't know. Even now, the petrified flames whirl of or whirl something, because... Who knows?
I still cannot appreciate the studio choosing to put like this tree or something in like the background which is supposed to create this 3D effect it really ruins some of the screenshots you can create with this beautiful game. Place upside down in the ground, the petrified roots of a giant tree reach towards the sky. All the Voral, including Ivor and Hakon, have separated from the caravan temporarily, giving Baldur's Godstone a wide berth. The giant's presence is missed as you continue to feel watched. Hello, what do you want know about Old Dinger. Search the Godstone for any items. Uh, call for a rest nearby. Let's ask about this. Not much, but enough, the skull says. These flames symbolize Baldinger's love of fire and war. The first being a means to the second. When the Varl were dominating humans in the first great conflict, it was Baldinger who gave the losing side fire to combat the giants. You hold up your hand to hold the storyteller listening through the rain for anything that might be following you. Hearing nothing, Ella resumes holding the gaze of his, his audience. Humans praise Baldinger for the gift of fire, but the god only desired more war. He points towards the distant shapes of the Voral when the giants and humans found peace. This godstone fell from grace. It looks to continue keeping the land scorched. Perhaps its shadow can still kill. Uh, step into godstone shadow, lift this place, grab some fighters and patrol the area. You and a few others uh, slink away from the mass of clansmen and soon come upon unsuspecting cra cragsmen waiting to ambush your caravan. There is no time to consider your options. So I'm guessing that we are out of Varl, which I can live with, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we have three archers. Uh, we should definitely promote you, my dear friend. And da, 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 should we promote the prince? Ah, sure. So let's do this. Uh, we have one, two, three melee combatants, and we have three ranged attackers. Hopefully, it will work. Not really sure how many trinkets are equipped to them because Ivor, Hakon, and others have quite a lot of the trinkets equipped. Okay, I definitely don't want to do this type of combat. And what we need to be careful about is that the spearmen can actually reach behind our front line. So... Uh, let's put you here, let's put you here, and let's put you here. If we move them like this, we have a shield wall to uh, put up against the enemy melee combatants. Fortunately, out of reach. Not anymore. We have weak morale, which is reducing our max of will points by one. Let's try to build up some of that will point. I'm quite sure that she has set up a trap so that if we try to move closer, we're gonna trigger it. Uh, let's end her turn. Let's try to get them closer. I really don't want to move forward unless I have to. Shield walls are designed to hold out some damage, fingers crossed. Damn it. Uh, let's go with this so that if he tries to move in, he's gonna trigger this. Beautiful, beautiful. He's going after 
our prince. Let's make him pay for this insolence. Also, it looks like the trap by the enemy has been set off here. Good to know. Good to know. We're gonna start moving forward in order to meet the enemy. Yeah, I kind of realized that I could have used up some will points in order to actually kill the damn spearman, but what's done is done. Um, you know what? Let's go run off here and let's punish this guy. So that's three points of armor, three points of strength that have been removed. This is gonna suck. We can reduce the armor on him by quite a lot. We can move forward in order to actually theoretically dish out some damage to the archer. Okay, I really don't appreciate being shot at, so we're gonna do something to return the fire. Really need to be careful when it comes to my archers here because they are all grouped up, which might cause issues like trying to target some of the enemies. This is almost a kill. So let's move over here. I can theoretically kill this dude. But the archers have their turn now. Uh, uh, we need to move uh, you somewhere else in order for you to be more effective. Let's kill the archer. Now it's gonna be his turn. He's gonna go after our archers too. Let's reduce some of that pesky armor. Damn it with this fire stuff. But they actually even damage their own units. gonna go and attack the enemy archer, dishing out some serious punishment to her. Because it's her turn, so theoretically, the damage taken might be dramatically reduced. Now we're gonna kill him, which is gonna skip the turn. Theoretically, it should have been our turn, but I guess sometimes there's just no arguing with the way the game is set up and let's not waste more time and just dispose of the enemy archer so that we will reduce the number of injuries on our party. The prom promotion for a thief and a gill has been injured as well as Ursa. And it should be like these eight points of renown. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we have successfully protected the caravan, having killed or run off the cragsman, you return to the remaining clansmen at the godstone. Grabbing your belongings, your foot hits something in the mud. You reach down and find a small skull with a yellow ribbon through the eye. You toss it in a bag with a, without another thought. Okay. And that would be... Another five points of renown, an achievement, and a trinket. It looks like we are coming across some town. The rain finally ceases, but the wind picks up. You squint into the gusts and have a clear view of the vast plains ahead. There doesn't seem to be much out there, says Ivor. His tone conveys wonder and concern in equal measure. We have really low amount of supplies, so I'm really hoping we're gonna be able in Grundar 
to pick up a bit more of them. Let's just check our progress on the world map to see what distance did we so far cover so far. God damn it, I hate the loading screen. So we're still not that far from Borgsgard or Orms... Orms... But we are coming across Gundar... Gr Grundar. You see, this is what I'm talking about. Me trying to pronounce these names. Maybe I should watch like few seasons of Vikings and then come back and see if I will improve, but I, I don't have that much time, so, uh, yeah, uh, let's just, uh, see if we can reach the town. Uh, the group shakes again, enough to cause the Yawks to strain at the leads in panic. Out here in the plains, with nothing but open sky above, you feel remarkably vulnerable. Only a few trees around and no mountains, Hakon says in a wry tone. Looks like we only have to worry about the ground opening up beneath us. He shrugs at the look you gave him. Gruntar almost looks forgotten by the rest of the world. Maybe those who live here have forgotten the rest of us too. As long as they have supplies, I don't care. In a field just outside Grundor, the caravan spots several creatures you assumed were myth. I don't believe it. Are those? The horseborn hold simple bronze weapons and stand guard over a few others who look wounded, unable to rise. The size of the caravan makes them nervous. I had to get a closer look. Odd don't. This could get ugly. Me too. I think this might be us finally interacting with the uh, centaurs, uh, which are displayed on the front screen of the game. I'm not really sure. The two of you advance a hundred yards, showing every sign of respect and peace. A number of clansmen push closer too. A male horseborn stops a hoof repeatedly. The female tail whipping banished a javelin. Damn, look at these killer tattoos, man. Wow. Adif, damn, the caravan is scaring them. Everyone move back. Go tell the archers to put down their bows. I'm not really sure which one is better. If we move back, the archers can still be effective. Well, let's go with this. Adif looks irritated at having to leave the horse burn, but she does what you say. You slowly advance at point. Amruk, what's wrong with your friends? The two standing horse born exchange a look, the female starting and shaking her mane. You help? His voice sounds strained and his mouth moves uncomfortably around the foreign words. Rook, yes, help. You wave at Avent who approaches slowly but confidently. The female looks agitated and speaks in long stream of consonants. The male responds to her then turns to you. Help, Rook and others. I'll try, this is certainly a first. The standing horseborn step aside, allowing Avon to approach the wounded fighters. Please tell me there is a freaking market. With Avent and Juno tending to the wounded, Roach and other horseborn, the caravan settles down outside the scant town of Grundar. It appears the town is enjoying a small festival. Quite a few clansmen go over the hill to enjoy the sights and sounds, but soon return looking disappointed. They called us outsiders, a woman says. They don't want us interrupting their wheat harvesting festival, but the merchant don't seem to mind trading. The clansmen soon shrug it off and take renewed interest in the horseborn, some in awe, others in disgust. Yeah, okay, market. We really need those freaking supplies. Uh, we're gonna need at least two days.
worth of supplies. If I am left with 13 points of renown, that means that I will not be capable of doing a whole lot. Hold on, these are some freaking amazing trinkets. What the hell, man? The dust is definitely a great thing because for a level 3 trinket, it gives you plus 2 armor. The Razor, for example, requires level 4 but gives you 3 will points when a hero rests. So, that can be really useful. Look at this. God damn it. This thing is for level 10. Ring of bygone kings and slaves, scribes and warriors, an eternal promise of strength for the task at hand. Plus 3 to all talents, plus 20% critical chance, yeah, but we don't have anyone even close to that level, so... I'm definitely taking the dust, and I definitely want to take this damn thing. Which is gonna leave me with 0 points of renown. And you know what, screw it, we're taking 8 days worth of supplies, I don't care. Uh, we are gonna rest up for two days to improve our morale. How are the heroes doing? We should theoretically have taken care of all the injuries, and it looks like we have now three of the horsemen. And this is the trinket which we came across, the Fellow's Rebirth. The small skull of Cragsman infant tied with a golden ribbon supposedly ward away death. Protects from death. Strength reduced by 1, minus 3 armor, uh, plus, uh, or this is 35 dodge strength. Okay, interesting. Really interesting trinket. Seriously, like, plus 3 will at rest. Or this plus two armor, that can be amazing thing, especially if you give it to like an archer or something. So yeah, th these are some amazing goddamn trinkets to be honest. Uh, let's just go and try to talk with the centaurs. Uh, oh, s s cat back. I'm not really sure if that is the pronoun correct name or correct pronunciation, uh, but whatever. You glance at Ubin who snorts and smiles. U Ubin. Scatnatch, thanking you for helping his friend Roach. Who the hell wrote this sentence? Roach, De Detrius, the other one, but he's not in a talking with Voral and humans mood. You're welcome. I'd like to meet Hakon. Skatach tail swats his flanks and he bows his head towards Hakon. Skatach, Voral man's same herd? No, but we're no longer enemies. Uben, I haven't seen Horseborn in centuries. Last they knew, humans and Varl were at each other's throats. What brings you so far north? What happened to Roraj? What do you know of our language? Uh, let's ask this. Skathatch looks confused by the question, so Uben shows him the map pointing to Dadalong and Grundor. Food, our planes, rake. Hakon snorts. Might be justice. Didn't they kill all the horses? What? I'm not gonna try to pronounce this name. Are you kidding me? Uben. His ancestors did, yes. But blaming folks for things that happened hundreds of years before they were alive? You may as well accuse these humans around us of starting the great wars. What? Uh, let's go and ask this. Roach, brave fighter. Protect food. Hit many times. Hit? Who was attacking? Skatach says many things in his other language. Sh should I even, like, try to pronounce this goddamn thing? 
Okay, g give me a second here. Uh, pre J kind toy? Uh, I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to go with. You see, why the hell do they come up with languages or words like these, which might theoretically mean something in some dead language or something? I'm not really sure how much research that the studio behind the game do into these Nordic languages or something. But God damn it, how am I supposed to pronounce this? If you are gonna give me random narrations, why the hell isn't there a volunteer in your studio to try and pronounce this? It looks like a freaking cat was in the office and by accident hit the keyboard and someone did not notice this. I'm not really sure how to pronounce this, sorry guys. His eyes go wide and he stomps the ground before pointing west. You look at Uben. I don't have a clue. But clearly not a friend. Was it the people here? Here in Gondar? Skatach looks where Ikon is pointing. He shakes his head and points west again. The Voral King eyes Skatach suspiciously. How do you know of our language? Skatach just stares at you. You talk like us. Where did you learn? Heard little trade with mans in mud. I think he means our bog friends, the Cragsmen. Have you found the food you were seeking? Does that mean all the horseborn have come north? Enough for time, I guess. Two others take to hurt in south. His hoofs scuffed the ground during certain words. Just those two? What about you and the couple? Skatach, Roach. That tree you stay, this hurt help. We help this hurt. That might not be wise. Yeah, let's go with thank you. Skatach nods in movement and uses most of his upper body. Man Varl, a horse born, same hurt, funny. Ubin chuckles as the group separates. So we have rested. We, uh, let's go one more day. And this is where I'm gonna leave the game. We are finally with some provisions. We have met the horseborn. We have moved to another part of the map. And there are more names that I cannot even pronounce. Now, if you did enjoy this episode, please consider giving it a like. This grape. This grape. Yes, this grape. This helps greatly to improve uh, the viewership as the algorithm will then push the content onto more viewers who might potentially look up Banner Saga or the other content which I'm publishing on a weekly basis. So if you did like what I do here, consider checking out the playlist and also checking out the channel. I publish content on a weekly basis for playthroughs, discussions, uh, early in-game reviews, uh, tips and tricks videos, so go check it out. A uh, link will be in the description. I'm gonna wish you a pleasant rest of the day, and hopefully I will see you at the next one. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.